Today we're gonna fix the lights on a Sears side-by-side -side refrigerator. This one happens to be a model number 10641152210 from 2013 manufacture date, and that's when I purchased it as well. Right now the lights are broken, or at least they were a few hours ago, and I have since fixed them. I wanna show you how to do that. Right now, I'm gonna pull this away. You can see the fridge in real life. These are the handles on the left and right side. If I open the freezer door, you will see inside there some food and more importantly, this. This is a light module that is currently working. It happened to be the culprit and was broken um, earlier. So uh, I will show you how to do it, but while I have the door open, and I'm sharing this view with you. I will show you how to pull that thing out. It's held in with some tabs that you'll see up closer sooner. And right now, if I stick a screwdriver in here and kind of give it a little twist, I can pry it away from the wall. That's a nice big gap. You might not be so lucky. Um, and then once you pry it away, you'll see tabs exposed. There's one here and one here. If you push down on this tab, if you push down on this tab, you will release it and you can pull out that corner of the light. If you pull down on the tab that sits here, you can release the other corner and then you're home free. We'll show you how to do that in the next clip. Uh, but right now, I'll end with a quick view of how this all works, how it's wired. All of the lights are in series, so usually if one breaks, they all break. You'll see more about that electrically later. And the switching happens either in the freezer. There it is. There's the switch at the top corner of the freezer. And then also it might happen in the refrigerator. The switch is also around the top edge. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There we are inside the switch inside the refrigerator. More coming up. Here we see how to mechanically disassemble the light modules. I'm holding in my hand here one of them. I rescued this from the freezer. I want to show you how it goes in. It's held in by four tabs, and that's it. So these tabs are inserted into a hole in the freezer compartment, in this case, and they grab onto the inside of the wall with these hooks. Now, to get this out, it's a little tricky because you can't see the tabs. They're behind the wall of the freezer. Um, if this were the freezer wall, you would see it kind of lines up roughly like this. So to get those tabs loosened, you have to sort of pry the whole assembly away from the freezer wall a little bit. If you make a little crack, watch over here at the bottom. If you make a little crack and stick a screwdriver in there and twist it a little bit, you can start pulling away. I use this screwdriver. You can start pulling away the module from the freezer compartment wall. That is just enough to get access to the tab, at which point you can stick a smaller screwdriver in there and try to push down and bend the tab away from the camera, in this case, to release the hook there that's holding everything in. If you get that right, you're almost, you're halfway there because you'll have to do the other one in a similar way. I always am careful when I do this so I don't break the tabs. I don't know if there's a secret way to do it, but I found it kind of difficult. Um, once I got it out, it's pretty easy to see what you've got. The last two tabs come out pretty much automatically. And when you're done, you have this thing dangling from the sidewall of your freezer because it's still connected by this electrical connector. There's a wire harness that comes out of the freezer wall and you need to get that disassembled next. The way to do that is if you look very closely at the connector, you'll see right under that letter D, uh, you can see there's a little rampy looking shape. That's another tab, that's another hook that something locks into. The connector dangling from the freezer wall has a corresponding hook that grabs onto that. To loosen it, you have to get 
under it somehow and pry it up with a screwdriver, um, pry it away from the connector. And if you're lucky, that'll pop out without breaking also. Again, maybe there's a trick to doing that. I don't know. I found it a little, you had to be patient and try not to snap off the hook on the wiring harness because uh, that would probably be hard to replace. Phew, finally, I have this apart. Well, almost. What I'm gonna do next is take the last bit apart. This is probably the easiest one here. The board itself is dropped into this assembly that has the lens, the plastic assembly. And all you have to do is push back at the tab and get under that and pop it up. I'll do this, making a little mess of the video. Uh, let's see, here we go. Blah, blah, blah. So you just push these away, these two tabs, and you pry that up. Finally, we are done. You can set this aside, you'll need it later when you put things back and you'll now have a module ready to test electrically, which we will do next. Here is an electrical schematic of the three light modules that are in the appliance. And you will see if you look at this that the LEDs that light up are connected in series. So if everything is hooked up correctly and working, you'll see all of the lights come on with roughly the same bright intensity, and they're all powered by a single power supply that lives in the upper light module in the freezer, uh, no, in the fridge compartment, because there's two. There's an upper and lower in the fridge, and then the, the third one is in the freezer. If I just turn this sideways, I'll show you what the circuit boards look like. We're going to zoom in in a minute and talk about how to test them, uh, make sure the lights work on them. And before I do that, I should show you something that I neglected to show you um, in the video, which I already shot about how to test them. Uh, you'll see in that upcoming section, you'll see me applying a positive 12 volts to something. And I don't think I showed in that video how I got the 12 volts. I'm actually using a repurposed wall wart, something like this. This is a 12 volt supply if you read it closely. And I have another one sort of like this. I just cut it up, cut up the wire and attached to the wires. It was a spare. You probably have a million of them lying around your house too. So that's how I got my 12 volts. It turns out you need some pretty good current to see the lights light up. I did try a 9-volt battery. That's not enough. There's not enough current coming out. They'll light up very dim, but not a very good way to get your test voltage for testing the lights. Up next, how to test the lights. Here's the way to test the LED light module electrically. What you'll see after you take everything apart is something that looks like this. It has four LEDs, a series resistor, and pretty much nothing else. This is the part that ends in 057. Okay, so that's in the freezer, and it's in the lower of the two lights in the refrigerator compartment. Now, it might not be obvious how to check for this. If you reverse engineer the schematic, you'll find it looks something like this. It's just a series connection of four LEDs. So if I touch positive to positive and negative to negative, I should expect the lights to come on. Here we will try it. That looks great, okay? So it looks like this module is working. You can see I used two nails, so I get a nice pointy um, access to the LED. Uh, sometimes circuit boards have plastic coatings, so you don't always get the contact you think you're gonna get. For instance, if I try to connect to this plus and minus labeled here, I may be lucky or I may not. Oh, I guess I'm lucky and it's not coated with plastic, but you never know. So um, always doubt yourself and make sure you're connecting metal to metal. Finally, if I really want to test the circuit board thoroughly, I really should go to the other side where the current comes in right here at this connector and 
um, connect appropriately there. Uh, let's say, take my word for it, I did this. It's hard to see the lights because they're now on the bottom side. But what I did is I raised up the device on a uh, wristband, rubbery wristband thing. And I actually put it on top of a mirror so that I could peek under there and see if all four lights were working. So for the sake of the video, I think this is hard to film, but if I connect these two to that terminal, trust me, this lights up. So that's good. Finally, if you want to test the other circuit board, the other circuit board is the one that ends in 058. It looks kind of the same on one side, but you can see all of the power supply electronics on the other. This is pulled out of the top of the refrigerator compartment, um, and that's from, from that assembly. If you want to access the LEDs here, the good way to do it is through the same way I was doing it earlier with the plus and the minus. I'll check it out quickly here. That worked great. And I would, I didn't go any further with this. If you really want to check the power supply electronics and make sure they're putting out an appropriate voltage, you need to put 110 volts in here. And I have not gotten that far yet. Um, but that's how you would test this if you wanted to. The schematic looks like this. The entire schematic you can deduce from the schematic that's online. Maybe I'll get to that, maybe I won't. But um, now we know how to test electrically the light modules. At this point, I'm ready to reassemble. I've done some troubleshooting electrically and I've determined that the freezer's LED module was the one that was broken. So now we're looking into the freezer. I've reassembled a new module and I've connected it to the electrical connector that comes out of the wall of the freezer. Everything works great. I checked the refrigerator also. No surprise, that's working well again now. Because things are in series, then when one fails, they all fail. So now that I have fixed this, everything works great and I'm ready to put things back together. Now, I've already done the electrical test with the connector connected, and because it's kind of hard to deal with the connector, uh, to disassemble it, I'm not gonna bother doing that. I'm just gonna reconnect the lens assembly, the plastic thing, onto the circuit board. I'll do that right here in the freezer, and I start with the side that has the connector on it, stick it into those tabs, you may or may not see this in a video. I'll just be a little loose with this and get it done. I'm gonna snap it in. You'll see a registration in the corner. There's only one correct way to do it. And now I stuff everything back into the wall. First, I'll assemble the bottom. Next, the top. Putting it in is an awful lot easier than taking it out. That's the whole thing. It's designed to be easy to assemble, but hard to disassemble. And that is that. So now we have a working light. One final comment. No, that's enough comments. I'll call it quits here. You know how to reassemble it now. Okay, now that we have everything fixed, here's a few final comments. The kit arrived like this in a small box. This is the number on it. And what's inside is one of the modules that has the power supply and two of the modules that don't have the power supply. These are seen in detail in the video. I ended up replacing my freezer light, as you saw, using a leftover part from the last time I did this repair job. So the old, I pulled out the one from the freezer this morning. Um, unfortunately, it is the one I installed back in six months ago. I'm speaking to you in August of 23 right now. So this only lasted six months. I'm a little concerned about my new repair. I sure hope it lasts longer in the freezer than this one did. Here, I now have one of everything because I've used up my old kit that I purchased several months ago. And now I have one of everything for repair later if I need it. 
Finally, how did I deduce the freezer was the problem? I was lucky I went there first. When you're troubleshooting series circuits, you never know which one's broken. But I noticed that these LEDs were glowing ever so slightly when they were supposed to be on. And I suspect that even though this was an open circuit, um, not in the circuit anymore, there must have been a very tiny bit of leakage current from here to somewhere, and this got lit up ever so slightly. So because this series group of LEDs was not lighting up, I went there first, and I was lucky I found the problem there. Once everything got back, put back together, it all uh, was fine. These were verified to be fine. That's all I have. I hope you get some benefit out of it. If you did, please put it in the comments. This is the first how-to video I've ever made, but I spent so much time figuring all this out that I figured it. I owed it to the next person to um, maybe get a head start. Enjoy.